Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habat fi Allah unfortunately it's really not enough for a lot of us to really go back to the ulama and especially the ulama arabaniyun those major mountains of knowledge that existed in this uh, contemporary time and if you go back to the salaf salih and all throughout islamic history you'll find so many other examples and so much kalam so much speech from the ulama arabaniyun about uh, being kind and gentle towards one another and that this is from a usul of Islam, and that moreover, especially between Ahlul Sunnah, that how you should deal with one another in mistakes, this is something we are suffering immensely from in this day and age. And this comes not just from du'at uh, around the world, but also even some scholars, especially younger scholars generally, but some even that have reached the age of uh, being elders, and unfortunately, not going back to what those imams before them were upon as far as how did, you know, this beautiful advice. Listen to what Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala said about the du'at and the scholars and about their mistakes and how to deal with them. He said, Wajib ala talabit al-ilm, wa ala ahl al-ilm, ma'rufat al-wajib al-ulama, wa wajib alayhim husn al-dhan, wa tayba kalam, wa al-ba'd an sayil kalam. فدعات إلى الله جل وعلا حقهم عظيم على المجتمع فواجب أن يس يساعدوا على مهمتهم بكلام الطيب والأسلوب حسن والظن الصالح الطيب لا بالعنف والشدة ولا يتتبع أخطاء الأخطاء وأشاعتهم وأشاعتها لتشهير من فلان وفلان. Listen to what this great Imam said. He said, "It's an obligation upon the students of knowledge and upon the people of knowledge to understand or know the uh, obligation uh, their 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 obligation to the ulama, and it's an obligation upon them to have." Uh, you know, uh, to not be suspicious, to have good, positive uh, thought of them, and to have a beautiful speech regarding them, and be far away from wicked speech about them. And he said, the du'at to Allah, you know, those du'at that call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, that their right is is immense over the society. I mean, the society, the scholars have immense rights over us. And so it's an obligation to assist them with regards to their mission, uh, with beautiful speech about them and excellent manners towards them and a positive, righteous uh, uh, attitude towards them and not being violent and being harsh and stern with them and do not follow up their mistakes and spread them uh, so that the people, so so-and-so and so-and-so flee from them. And he said, يَجِبُوا أَن يُكُونْ طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ وَيُكُونْ سَائِلْ يَطْلَبُ الْخَيْرِ وَالْفَائِدَةِ وَيَسْعَلْ عَنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْخَطَى أو إشكال أو إشكال سأل بالحكمة والنية الصالحة كل إنسان يخطي ويصيب ما فيه أحد معصوم إلا رسول عليهم أفضل صلاة وسلام معصومون فيما يبلغون عن ربهم وصحابة رضي الله تعالى عنهم مجمعين وغيرهم كل واحد قد يخطي وقد يصيب وعلماء كلامهم معروف في هذا وتابع وتابعون ومن بعدهم. Then the great Imam he said, it's an obligation to uh, for the, for the student of knowledge and the person who questions, you know, questions the ulama has questions for the ulama or questions for the students of knowledge or questions for the people of knowledge that the person has a good intention. And that they're asking for good and something that's beneficial. Don't just ask questions just to cause fitna or ask questions for other things. And he says, and that they should ask about those affairs. 
you know, affairs of good and that have a benefit. And that if the scholar falls into a mistake or or, or, or an issue, that they should be asked with wisdom and a, a good intention that you should, you know, follow up and ask them with good, with a good and in, sound intention and with wisdom. And every person makes a mistake and gets something correct. And there isn't anyone who is perfect except the messengers, alayhim afdhu salatu wa salam, and they were perfect in delivering their message, uh, delivering the message from their Lord. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and other than them, every one of them had a mistake and was, was incorrect at times. And the scholars, they're speaking about this issue. It's well known and that uh, about this and the tabi'een after them. And then he said, لَيْسَ مَعْنَ هَذَا أَنَ الدَّاعِيَ مَعْصُومْ أو العالم أو المدرس أو الخطيب لا قد يخطئون فالواجب إذا نبهوا أن يتنبهوا وعلى من يشكل عليه شيء أن يسل بالكلام الطيب والقصد الصالح حتى تحصل الفائدة ويزول الأشكال إشكال من غير أن يقع في العرض فلان أو نيل منه so we'll end with this because it still goes on further. And there's so many fawaid, but we'll just keep it more brief. Keep it uh, brief. So he said, and this does not mean that the da'i, the person calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is perfect. Or the alam, the scholar. Or the teacher. Or the khatib, the one given the khutbah. No. They could make mistakes or they do make mistakes. And it's an obligation to uh, you know, alert them about their mistakes. And with regards to those things that you are having a difficulty in understanding or accepting. And that you should ask with beautiful speech and with a righteous intention until you obtain a faida, a benefit. And that the uh, the thing that which is difficult to understand is removed and other than that. And do not fall into uh, speaking about the honor of so-and-so and, -and -so you know, having the people flee from him. This is an imp imperative uh, lesson for us on how we should deal with one another's mistakes. And I'm talking specifically about Ahlul Sunnah. People whose who's soul is the same, but yet maybe in a mas'ala, so-and-so makes a mistake. Even two, even three masail, they make a mistake. What's wrong with advising them? Why is it that we have to rush now to cut and paste on the YouTube, make videos and attack and destroy their honor? Why is it now that we rush to go to a scholar who may not even know the individual just to get a fatwa to destroy the person's dawah, to destroy the, peop the person's honor? Why is it that that's become the, the regular principle instead of going back to what the imams told us? And why is that not going back to what the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam illustrates for us? A deen and a The religion is sincere advice. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wa fa inna dhun al hadith. Beware of suspicion because verily suspicion is the worst of speech. So there's so many uh, ayat and a hadith to show us that that's the asl, that we should be kind and gentle to one another. And that we should cooperate in righteousness and not cooperate in backbiting and enmity and hatred and spreading evil. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعًا وَلَا تَفَرَقُوا Hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَتَعَوَنَ عَلَى بِرِّ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوَنَ عَلَى إِثْمِ وَعُدْوَان uh, cooperate in righteousness and God fearfulness and do not what's the that we could fall into well if we're busy spreading the sins of so and so attacking so and so cursing so and so trying to destroy the honor of so and so cutting and pasting the kalam of so and so making a new video and a new article and a new 
70-page PDF about so-and-so who's from Ahlul Sunnah. And we're leaving Ahlul Bid'ah in the clear Hizbiyun. We don't dare speak about Hamza Yusuf and what he's spreading in, in the Aqidah of Maturidiyah and Asha'ira. We don't dare do that and all those other and all his pals uh, who are on the same methodology and what they're doing to the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, in the West and perhaps their effect in the East. We don't dare do that. But instead we'll wipe, write pages and pages of pages about what we believe are mistakes of Muhammad Munir. We'll make khutbahs and we'll make lectures and devote whole things instead of raising up our masajid about Shadid Muhammad. We'll have whole new silsila, you know, a whole series of writings and papers and stuff about Tahir Wyatt. Why is that? Something is wrong there. So that's why we have to reassess ourselves and ask ourselves, are we adhering to the book and the sunnah, the messenger of Allah and the, and the menhaj of the salaf? And why is it people are cutting and pasting and taking from one and two and three scholars, getting a, a speech to destroy a da'i a million miles away, and then the people say, the scholars have spoken. Oh yeah, that one, that two, that three have spoken. Yeah, okay. And was it based on hujja wa bayan? And was it based, you know, based on dalil and evidence? And was it based on a very important fit principle? Which is what? Which is a habitifillah. A ruling on something, a part of that ruling is that you have a good picture of that issue. So, for example, you ask a scholar about a die in Alaska. Okay? The scholar's never been to Alaska. He doesn't know anything about Alaska. He might not even know it's in America. So you tell him he's in America, we have a da'i. He's doing this. Sheikh, he, he's doing such and such bid'ah, such and such bid'ah, such and such bid'ah, and such and such sin. And it may be true. It may not be true. It may have a, a part of a truth, but it may be a little bit. You, you made it a little prettier, so it was easier to get that ruling. Then the sheikh says, clearly that's a mubtedia. Clearly he's on the madhab of Akhwana Muslimin. Clearly he has something from takfir. I'm hesitating from making takfir of him only for this reason. Okay, so you got your ruling. This is a dangerous game that's been played for years. So I want you youth, oh youth, beware of this. And once you get the tools, go to the Arabic, go see what these imams like Bin Baz, Imam al-Albani, how they dealt with Mubtidiyah, how they dealt with Ahl Sunnah, and what they, oh, there's countless things. Imam Fozan and everything, he's still living. How they talk about these issues. Imam Abdul Masan al Abad, he's still, he's still with us. Wallahi and And so many ulama, kabir wa salir. But you only take a few statements and you run with it. And you say, the scholars have made this list. Here's our Hizbi list. And I, I don't think it's a joke. And I'm promising, I'm going to end with this. When I was in Yemen the last time, I came from Sheher, from Hadramaut. And there was total animosity because this was the time Sheikh Yahya was speaking about Sheikh Abdurrahman Adani. And they had they had a list that came from Damaj and it came to Sana'a. And it was so funny, the brother, I don't remember his name, but he said, bruh, you better be careful. You could be on that Hizbo list. He called it the Hizbo list. And this is, subhanAllah, there was a list of like 200 people. It was a literal list. And that's why I don't understand these Islamic witch hunts and stuff. I don't know where this came from. I you know, it's weird. It's just some weird stuff that I don't know. Where does it come from the Salaf? You know, so sometimes what happens, people, their hearse, they want to refute bid'ah and they want to be away from bid'ah and they want to keep the religion pure. And that's beautiful. But sometimes they go to an extreme and they fall into bid'ah and invent something new as a way to refute what they believe was a bid'ah or a mistake or people of desires. And this was the way of the all the groups the early sects where do you think the Ashiris and the and the early the uh, Mu'tazila and the Jahmiyyah they weren't all the same they refuted refuted ba'dhum ba'dha and the Khawarij the Murjiyah developed as a refutation to the uh uh, uh takfiris so you see that you know uh, Ahl Sunnah 
يكفر بعضهم بعضا ويبدعهم يبدعوا بعضهم بعض they make takfir of one another and they declare one another to be mubtadi'a so don't follow that asloop follow what these great imam rabbaniyun say wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad